like I told um, the candidates in Limba when I went there, I told them, we vote for the male candidates. That is why the male candidate will decide to have um, relationships in every constituent because he uses that as a strategy to undermine the others. So you know that politics, you hear something like, you know that politics is interest, right? And you are my girl, so you need to vote for me. She won't vote for her female candidate. She will vote for the male candidate. So we vote for the male candidate. We are more than the male in numbers. Why are we losing? Is the question. And that's the only answer is because we're not voting for ourselves. We keep voting for the males and leaving ourselves out. Women's political participation remain a major challenge in Liberia. Even at the House of Senate and Representative, retaining is also a challenge. The winner just ended October 10 general elections. The campaigning mode was not inclusive of both gender. Funding and election violence also remains a serious challenge. During this election, we observed from the political party standpoint, women were missing from the mainstream discourse after the agreement of the 30% general quota of women participation signed by political parties and men had access to fair representation and meaningful participation in the electoral process than women. Some of the factors that contributed to female candidates losing election was traditional belief and cultural practices, among others. Even though there are no legislated gender quota in Liberia, structural barriers to women equal participation in political life can be addressed through temporary special measure with a specific target. Political party can also provide financial support to women candidates, not only for their nomination fees, but also for their campaign work during the electoral period. Liberia ranked gender-based violence as the most important right that the government and society must address. Citizens are evenly divided on how often gender-based violence occur in the community. Half, which is 50%, says violence against women and girls is somewhat a very common. Why? Just as many disagree. With these findings, we were able to interview some female candidates from the just in the election. Siatana Poli, former female representative candidate of District No. 11, Maserado County, explains some of the challenges while contesting in the just in the elections, labor, lack of finance, and selling of votes as a contributing factors for her losing election three times in a row. My district, like any other district in Liberia, is heavily challenged, especially when the they, they, they male who are financially stable, they, they, they are connected, and whatever it is, they feel that what they have is theirs. I mean, it's no woman's word that any woman will just come and take it. We had different actors coming in the picture who felt that they could use their finances to, 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 to induce the, the minds of the people and they, they had a political will, they had the connections so they could intimidate us. In the first thing, we were, we were even into the campaign period when some of us who, who were considered or considered major actors of District 11, we were attacked. The first thing was, um, CIA's, um, opportunity, you know, I mean, obviously, once you as a female you decide to come into Liberian politics, just be prepared for that. Have a thick skin. I mean, that's why I can tell people because they will tell you things that are, that are in truth that you don't even know about yourself. And so when they when 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 they use these words on me, for me, I just laugh about them because I know they are not true. Those were some tactics that they know normally use because for them, the women are sharp people. Once you insult them. You attack them, they will stay back from the scene. The challenges of being booted, this one, and another one which is major has to do with finances. My dear, we've been taught, we've been taught getting ready to leave from NDR, they all us training, a sister, a, 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 I tell people, 
the people on our side party test is different from here in Liberia. Yeah, the voters are different. Our voters are uninformed. They are not informed. So you will not say, oh, but what's in town? Or maybe you gave me your platform. That one will make you win. Now you can get all the beautiful platform. You don't have t-shirts to give your voters. You don't have rights to give them. You don't have money to give them. Those are free. You will talk, 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 talk. At the end of the day, you get it all. That all. Tell that that. All right, go. Your friend ain't bringing money to all of you. Yeah, can you tell that that you go? And that's the reality that we'll be telling you. You will see at the end of the day, people will just work out once when so money become flab and night humanitarian. To make good impact projects. And the people will just carry away. You, you have been there with them for years. They will forget that you've ever been there with them. One day, they little cash because what? The kind of society we have. Poverty driven, horrible people. Former Representative Candidate Winifred Gelu of Nima County District Number no. Four also talked about her experience as she attached her defeat to tracking of voters by male candidates from all the districts, adding that traditional barriers stands as one of the contributing factors for female candidates not being successful within her district. Some candidates even took people from Guinea, from Africa to go and register to vote for them. The trucking was too much in my history. I was, I was, that's why really got me to, to, to maybe come the way my result came because the trucking was too much for the people from the district, the citizens from the district, they actually did their best and they tried. Most of them voted for me, but the people from outside, like the Gideon, the Afurian, they were just after the person that chucked them. You know, for Liberia, the male has the money, and we, the female, they look down on us. They will always say our occupation is being in the kitchen. We should take care of the children. So once you are a female and then you decide that, oh, I want to go into politics, they turn against you. You will be like, no, 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 no. All the men will go against you. No one wants to help. Even if like your own family member and they have money, they will never be willing to support you. Women, we have to stand on our feet. We have been marginalized by the male and youth. This is our time. Because for me, it's like in my district, I don't know. For me, I call it as a taboo that the people will always say, oh, women will not leave. We, we cannot uh, 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 empower women or women. Women, they are, they are not qualified to, to be us. And I decide to tell my youth or the, 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 the women of the district that no. This time around, women participation in politics is a must. This is everyone's business. So we have to take the uh, part to in making national decisions. So I talk to the youth. Talk to the women, try to convince them, and gradually we started working together. And some people try to like push me up. They started pushing me up. Yes, we can make it. We can make it. This is our time. So I had a lot of youth, a lot of women that were by my side, and some of them like sometimes they were willing to go and put together and help me with their finance. And that's how we started moving on. Meanwhile, Madam Ruth. A former female representative candidate from Riverside County District Number no. One explained that most of the political parties use female in order to get qualified by the National Election Commission as per the gender quota signed by political party for 30 percent women inclusion. The male dominant election, by fact that it was already dominated by male, that alone should know that we as females were marginalized. One main thing that happened to us as females in these elections, we were only used for not to qualify parties 30%. They put us on their tickets and then what did they do? They went back against us and put candidates in the very district that they said they wanted female candidates to be. So 
for me and contest her only coalition for democratic ticket. We they put up information that they wanted candidates to what to contest the primaries. What happened was I'm from the MPP in. So at the MPP, I joined the MPP, we did everything, and we applied as a party to the Congress, to the, the Congress for the ticket. And then we heard that Steve Tikwa was also applying for the the, the, the Congress. But what they did was because they wanted to play their game in the district, they advised Steve to not come to the primaries because they knew that. They knew that at the primaries, because I have the vote of the people, I was going to win him at the primary. And they had a information that when you contest the primary and you don't win, you will not contest again. So what they call it, the Congress they were, they kept Steve in the bar. He did not go for the primary, they kept him in the bar. All through the campaign, the Congress was supporting Steve. Their chair lady, their chairman, and the rest of the hurricane, they were supporting Steve Tikwa. Unknown to me. For me, I knew that my people were going to vote for me. I had my people. And so we went to the election. Even a time in the election, Steve Tikwa was using the standard bearer of the coalition flyer. He printed a flyer with the president photo. All around, we complained to Ned. I came to central office, and central office said that was a violation. When I went to the maestro in the county to complain, what did the maestro do? The maestro said we were all inner people. How did the maestro get to know that Steve Tikwa was for, for, for Congress? They were all playing games. At the end of the day, they could not change the voters' mind because it was already late. So we had a meeting as the coalition for democratic change. The, 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 co the, the coalitions and each party, what we were doing, we were recommending pool washers to be at the police center. We have 56 rooms. In district number two, out of the 56, the only two MPP that we should recommend just 10 out of the 56 in the whole district. Out of the 56, again, when we recommended our pool washer, what did they do? They went again and changed the pool washer. Unknown to us, unknown to me, I got to know on the 14th day that my pool washer, we were trained, were already denied and tech. So what did the coalition chairman do? He from Congress, he put pool washer that was protecting Steve Tikwa. Again, they did not stop there because we got witnesses. They were changing force into invalid force. They were doing ballot stocking, uh, a ballot issue. We come also and identify who to vote. They caught him with ballot paper. Somebody, they caught a photo with ballot paper. They asked the photo and then the photo said it was the ballot issuer that gave him that ballot paper. How many of that ballot paper from the ballot issuer that were given to that person? How many other places when you deny our food washers? How many other places that it happened? Because the place it happened is across the Yanni River. So we uh, we we never have pool washers because the pool washers were already denied in the other six places. What happened? So a lot of things we were only used, and instead of bearing himself confirmed, President, we are confirmed that we we put people on our party ticket and then we put people against them in the same district. Who did it? It was the con the, the Congress for Democratic Change were doing that because there are other parties part of the coalition. When you come from the LPDP, when you're in a district, the same Congress will go and put another candidate against you. When you part of MPP and you form another district, the same district, Congress will also go and put somebody in that. So we were just used as females. We were only used for the party to be qualified to get a 30%. Former Representative Candidate Lopu Blackie from District Number 17, Maserato County said, it is important that donors and citizens support women candidates. Adding that women candidates also need to spend enough time with their constituents in order to understand the voters' mind. And these were some of the challenges that I faced. The issue is big, but we have to so to have reached to certain areas in the district was not just easy. So even if we reached there, we didn't have so much time spent with the people. And our people need you to spend time with them and then they get to know you better so that in letting you, there is no obstacle. Then yeah, number two, finances. Because in politics, you need a finance to support your dream. And so the finances were actually not sufficient to put their power to places and then working along with the people. 
So what the National Commission should be doing is to ensure, ensure that political parties have the 30% will be inclusion. That is the mandatory. If it is not mandatory, some political parties will say that it's not mandatory for their parties. We have to institutionalize this. At least if the 30% is mandatory, political party will ensure that they have the 30% in women. And not just ordinarily, but we can look at the presidency for political parties, we can look at the vice president position, we can look at the senatorial seat, we can look at the legislative seat as well. So if they're talking about 30% inclusion, it should be just before we want to be some party chairperson, no, but a whole key position in political party, the 30%. Women political participation and inclusion remains a major challenge for female candidates and human rights advocates across the country. Some of these challenges include lack of phonies, traditional barriers, choking, physical abuse, and more others. Caroline Amand, a human rights advocate, gave reasons why women candidates are not elected as due to poor campaign strategy and unpreparedness of female candidates. From what I saw and observed during these uh, mm -hmm. elections, I think the female candidates didn't quite get the kind of support um, that we should have gotten. Um, financially, politics is expensive. So in terms of their um, publicity, their media engagement, in terms of um, community engagement, constituency engagement, all of those things play a major um, part in, in, in why, why I think they might have lost the way they did. And uh, also their preparation uh, uh, um, tactics and techniques that, they, that were used. So um, if you want to get into the race and you want to contest in a certain uh, district, you should be able to be familiar with that district. It's people, they should be able to know who you are and not like close maybe a year or two to elections and then you start to engage or six months to elections. I think that's late preparation and some of the candidates uh, fell victim to that. Some of them were in a very large district and uh, just maybe few communities knew about them and and then maybe six months of elections then they had to engage the rest of the other communities so I think um, being a part of the political landscape is an intentional decision you should think about it you should plan it it do not just happen you have to plan you have to strategize and then you go for it because it's quite expensive running as an independent candidate than that of uh, uh, a candidate on a political party ticket. So, for example, if you observe the billboards of independent candidates and that of the candidates on a political party ticket, you could see the clear disparity. The independent candidates' billboards were quite smaller, while those on the party ticket, their billboards were really big. And that alone tells you the, number, the level of uh, uh, funding that uh, funding support that those candidates will receive. So if we want that seat in that space, we have to take it. That uh, uh, gender quota in the house is not enough for us. In fact, it shouldn't be something that we should even dwell on as women in politics. Because at the end of the day, they can tell us 30%, they can even tell us 70%, Still, they will not honor it as they should. So I think we've come far enough to know that they won't honor that until we take it. If we want a seat, we work towards it and we take the seat. It is ours to take because we are Liberians and proud ones and we can make better leaders than what we have had. Someone said, but we put a woman there and it didn't work. And I said, how many times have you put a man there? You put a man there several times and it didn't work. So because you put one woman there one time and it didn't work, so you go back to a man that you put there a hundred times and it didn't work, 
What makes you think this hundred and one time will work? It wouldn't. So I'll say, try another woman again. Just as you will try another man, try another woman. The 2023 election was a decisive opportunity for Liberia to make progress on gender equality. Yet, the performance of parties concerning the 30% gender quota is extremely disappointing. Despite all of these challenges, some women were able to beat the storm and came up victorious after the election. According to research conducted, eight lawmakers, seven representatives, and one senator were elected during the October 10 pool which is somehow three times lesser than the previous election in 2017. The data from the National Election Commission shows that new female lawmakers have been representing some of the most traditional counties in Liberia, such as Grand Cayman, Grand Gita County, Bong, and Lofa County. Although three female incumbents were defeated, one senator were gained, a total of three female in a Senate president. In Mosorado, the largest county with 17 districts, only two districts were won by a female candidate. So whistle the number may appear to be low, women are being represented in strategic counties. This project titled Women Political Participation in Politics, Success and Campaign Stories in the Just in a General and Presidential Election. This reporting was supported by the International Women Media Foundation and the National Democratic Institute. My name is Chris Williams Joshua, reporting, a member of the New Alliance to End Violence Against Women in Politics and Media.